The possibility of attaining the advantages of animal locomotion with walking mechanisms has intrigued innovators for centuries. The earliest known patent for a walking device was issued to Gompertz in 1814. This film shows three generations of walking machines developed at the University of Wisconsin for the ultimate objective of helping paraplegics walk. The first machine is a three-legged walking robot carrying heavy weights placed high above the base of support. The device is operated by compressed air and carries its own power supply and controls. It is built to serve as a mechanical analog for investigating the problems associated with the locomotion, stability, control, and structural design of weight carrying robots. The locomotion is provided by the air cylinders representing the extensible legs. Air is provided into the cylinders in the proper sequence by means of servo valves. The hip cam is the central kinematic element of the machine. It provides the support for the body and keeps it leveled during walking. The cam follower on the forward leg produces the restraining support for the body when the other leg is maintained at a constant length. At various points in the walking cycle, it is necessary to prevent rotation of the leg about the foot plate. This is accomplished by pressure actuated clamping cylinders placed at the ankle joint. The second robot is developed to investigate the feasibility of a powered exoskeleton for providing locomotion to non-ambulatory persons. The machine is designed for one directional walking and the motion pattern for all the joints is coordinated by cams mounted on a single cam shaft. The exoskeleton interfaces with the patient at a steel reinforced fiberglass corset which is designed to support his weight with minimum interference with vital functions by gripping the abdomen just below the rib cage. The corset is then supported by leg brace frames formed from welded steel tubing. Special care is taken to fit the leg brace frames to the patient's leg without restrictions or binding. Power is supplied by a one-third horsepower 7,000 RPM DC motor mounted in the power box located on the back. Hydraulic and warm gear speed reductions along with cams, rocker arms, and coaxial cables generate the kinematic and power requirements to move the leg braces in a pre-designed walking pattern. To be useful for ambulation, the machine must also be able to provide sitting, climbing stairs, and stepping over obstacles under the patient's control. This can be accomplished with the help of computer control. The third walking machine was then developed to study the feasibility of a computer-controlled, multi-task, powered exoskeleton for paraplegics. It is an extension of the previous walking device and provides computer-controlled, multi-task capability under the patient's command. The different joints are powered by hydraulic actuators whose servo valves are driven by the operational amplifiers of a hybrid computer. The motion patterns are digitally stored in the computer and the different actions can be executed at different speeds by activating the input control switches which are mounted within the reach of the patient. Although a large hybrid computer was used in the developed prototype, the system is designed for control by a microcomputer no larger than four inches by four inches by six inches to be carried in the power backpack. The ambulation task capability in this prototype are walking, sitting, standing, climbing stairs, and stepping over an obstacle. This is slow motion execution of these tasks. First you see slow walking with a short stride.
Now the exoskeleton is sitting from a standing posture. Now it is standing up again. And this is the act of stepping over an obstacle. This illustrates the motion of the different joints in the act of climbing steps. The climbing is done one step at a time, and the patient has to activate the system for each step. Each joint in the exoskeleton is equipped with an angle sensor, and all the signals during any act are fed back to the computer to ensure that the actuators are performing as instructed, and if any error is detected, it is instantaneously corrected. The prototype is now worn by a normal subject in order to evaluate its performance. The subject uses two canes as a safety precaution and is instructed to relax the leg when moved by the actuator. The first executed act is a slow walk. The first part of the act is an initial stride, and when the command is received to stop the walk, a closing stride is automatically executed. The exoskeleton is now helping the subject sit from a standing posture. And now you see it help him stand from the seated posture. The stored motion profiles of two of the joints and the actual executed angles are shown in these live polygraph recordings. The top two records are the stored motion profiles and the lower two are the actual motions of the joints as indicated by the angle sensors. It can be seen that the actuators perform the expected tasks stably and without detectable error. 
Besides demonstrating the feasibility of powered exoskeletons for paraplegics, the developed prototype can be used in physical therapy to provide controlled exercise with graded assistance and to teach those with some muscular strength to walk again.